Hello folks, Donna here. Welcome to the classroom. Now today, this tutorial is about making the palm frond. Let me tell you, originally I shot this for another purpose and you know something guys, I think since then I got better. I really do believe that. Anyway, all the information is there though. And this is one of my favorite little leaves that I think I've ever made palm frond. Now I'm going to show you where I used it. Remember the bug, the gnu, and the jaguar? Well, you know, here is this cane right there on the bug body. I used it here. See all this around the base of the bunny rabbit? There you go. And here, there are two of the palm fronds right smack between his eyes and even some on his muzzle look a little like whiskers anyway it is one of my favorite leaves that i've made so that's what this class is about now remember i did make it for another purpose so if you hear something that doesn't quite make sense to you that refers to something that you haven't seen it's because of that. So I hope you forgive me. Also, my hands do kind of wander off a little bit in spots, but I think you can see the important parts. And you guys can tell me if it's like so bad, I have to redo it, okay? But I wanted to get this out to you guys faster rather than slower. And that's why I'm doing it this way. Now, there are other things that I have done in the same way that I will be releasing. So, um, you know, without further ado, let's get started. Okay, so here's a, a little sketch I did of the cane I want to build. Now, I'm going to start by building this cane here. I, I really like this with a very fine little fronds, um, fine little leaves sticking out. And you can see that this is the darker green and the lighter green. But you know, I think I want, I want some highlights in the middle of the leaves. And I have a choice here. I can actually make a three color blend, which I might do, or I can add some white details to the center area of the basic block that I'm going to create to build the leaves. Now the background is going to be black. So I have to decide what kind of outline I will put around each of the leaves. Now I could use gold. I could actually use white. I could leave it as it is and hope that the contrast and the colors is prominent enough so that the leaves don't disappear. Now in this dark area, I think that they might disappear. So I really think I need an outline color and I think it's gonna be gold today. Okay, so let's move on. My basic setup, my basic Skinner blend setup is this. Now, I think instead of, um, making a three-part Skinner blend. In other words, the dark green, white, and then uh, the lime green. I think I'm going to just add some white strips in this area. So let's get started. First, as I usually do, this is double thickness of the thickest setting of the pasta machine. And if you wanna see how this is set up, then please go to the basic two-part Skinner blend. All right, here I'm going to turn it this way and lift this up. 
Now here's my white clay. I am going to roll this. Quite thin, why don't I just roll it so that it is as long. And that turned out to be setting number six. If I wanted it thicker, I think I will make it a little thicker. I'm gonna fold it, reset the machine to five, and roll it. Thicker. Okay, move this, and now I'm going to cut long, thin, tapering pieces that I am, oh, excuse me, just going to set across this middle area. I am not going to put too far this way or this way. Okay, let's try that. Now I'm going to roll this through the pasta machine again. This edge will sit on the rollers. Whoops, reset your machine. It's not a disaster, but I should have done it. See, it's very thin here, that's okay. No, I'm going to roll it up. Start from the thick side and roll up to the thin. And I didn't, uh, trim the end. You might have noticed that because it's really not necessary. Okay, let's shorten it a bit. Now I'm going to flatten it because we're going to roll it through the pasta machine again. And this is quite a bit of clay. So what I don't want to do is I don't want to roll this through when it's too thick. So I'm just going to take my acrylic rod and thin it until it's just a bit thicker than the thickest setting of the pasta machine. Now, 
to the pasta machine we go. This edge on the rollers. Okay, now I'm going to fold it. Place this edge on the rollers and roll through. Fold it again. Now let's take a look and see what we have inside. It's always kind of a surprise. So, so far, that's what we have inside. Now, I could stop here, and I, I'm not sure. You know, I think I am going to stop here, because remember, by the time we reduce everything down, it'll be kind of nice if I see a little bit of this detail in the leaf in the cane. And it will be subtle, but I'm crossing my fingers and hoping it'll be there. Okay, so we're just gonna stop here. Now I'm going to stack this. I'll cut off the end. That's interesting. Okay, and it is now measuring five inches, two and a half. Stack. And stack. Okay. Now, this is rather long from tip to the base. So, I'm just going to compress it. Like so. And I made the slab rather low because the individual leaves are thin and fine. You can be pretty rough with the clay at this point. One of those situations where reverse reduction is just fine. It's not really going to diminish the pattern in the cane. But I have to make this quite a bit longer. So I'm going to make this about Mm, a little more than half the length, but it will be very long this way. So I have many pieces that I can cut and use in the, uh, in the palm front. Okay, so I'll be back. All right, so I reduced, uh, the leaf, but you see the, and here it is, but it's uniform, the same size from one uh, end to the other. You can see that the actual palm frond has smaller uh, leaves at the tip and they get larger at the bottom. So I'm going to taper this now. I'm going to make this end smaller than this end.
Now, there's something else I have to decide. Do I want to build the palm frond as a mirror image cane? In other words, build one side, just one side, and then put the sides together. And I think I'm going to do that. Um, but what I will do is I will build one side and when I put it together, I will take one side and I will either lift it up or pull it down so that the joints, the place where the palm frond meets the stem is not in the same place. Okay, you'll see. Okay, so reducing the size is just that simple. Just pinch like this, pull, stretch a little bit. And it's going to be two inches long. I can't construct canes that are like really, really, really short. That's too difficult. I think I'll make it two and a half, actually. All right, so here's the first, and the lime green will be the tip, and the darker green is where it meets the stem. Like so. All right, I will be back. Um, we're going to wrap this. We're going to wrap it in gold. Well, I reduced and shaped one, two, three, four, five, six pieces. Now, of course, we're just going to have this one at the very tip. And then these will be mirror imaged. You'll see. Okay, now each of these pieces will be wrapped with gold. And I've rolled this through setting number five on my machine. Now... You might, the reason why I'm doing it this way is because I would like this gold to be consistently the same thickness around all the different uh, leaves and petals in the cane. And if I, when this was very large, had wrapped it with the gold and then reduced it all out, well, that's a more efficient way to work. However, it's not predictable as to the thickness of the wrap. I could not tell you how thick or thin it was going to be, and I certainly couldn't reproduce it in the other elements of the cane. So I'm going to, this seems like a little more work, and it is, but I'm going to do it this way because I want the wrap around each of the elements to be uniformly thick or thin. Okay, so let's trim. And I will just do one because I think that's all you need to see. Okay. I'm going to start on the side here. And I did soften the gold clay quite a bit. I used my conditioning bar and I did that because when it comes time to reduce the cane, I want the outline to be soft enough and I want it to move as I'm reducing. All right, so as I'm wrapping, I, I stretch slightly. If you find an air pocket, just take a little pin and push it out. Note, when you get to the tip and the base, try to stretch the wrap clay around.
Hmm. Well, let me see if I can just... The angle was difficult, so I'm just going to have to do it this way. which is okay, that works. If there's a gap, just move the wrap clay over or take a brass rod or some kind of smoothing tool. And just close the wrap like this. And there it is. Now, that line looks kind of thick, doesn't it? Looks a little thick to me. But I'm going to stick with it because I really want some separation between the palm fronds and the black background. It might be a mistake. I'm just going to go with it anyway. All right, so I am going to continue. I'm going to cover each of the elements, and then we will put it all together. Now I've wrapped all the elements and here they are. I've kind of lined them up, but you can see that the tip and the base, the clay here is kind of rounded. So what I'm going to do now is bring points out at both ends. Now at the light end, that's where I may actually curl the tip. At the base, I just want the connection to be fine. I don't want a great big lumpy connection to the stem. So each one of these will get this treatment where I'm trying to make the tip and the base pointed. like so. It's a little thing, but I think it's going to make the, uh, the palm fronds look better. And it's particularly important at the tip if I want to curl or curve the piece. Now, one thing, and I'm telling you, uh, I've done this a long time and I still forget these little important things. I wrapped in gold. The thing is, when I make the cane and get to the point where I'm cutting, you know that gold clay is gonna look a little dark. And it's because of that mica shift phenomenon. See how bright and shiny it is here? Well, if it's bright and shiny on this surface, then it's darker here. And you can see that. See how much darker that is than this? So I'm glad I made it a little thicker because I had sort of completely forgotten about that phenomenon. Okay, so I'm going to continue this and then I'll be back. Oops. Now I'm going to wrap each of the fronds with black uh, so that 
you know, it's, our background is black, so it'll be easier to pack. Now, because there's, this is kind of an airy kind of flower, um, leaf, excuse me, frond, um, you know, I can make it, it doesn't have to be the thinnest wrap. So I've rolled my clay through setting number three, and that's what I'm going to do. Now, before you wrap, you're going to look at your individual leaf and make sure that you start at the base, not the tip. You also have to leave some of the gold exposed. Okay, just like that. So that that gold clay is going to make contact with the central stem. Just a little, not too much, but if that gold doesn't make contact with the central stem, it looks like it's floating in space. Okay, here we go. That looks good. Now, Okay, and there we have the gold, the gold that is not covered by the black. All right, so cover the rest of them. All right, I wrapped up uh, all my individual leaves and uh, we'll start putting it together now. But what we're gonna do is put it together from the second all the way down to the base, all right? So this is the way that goes. Here is the very tip. Set this aside. This is used later. Now I've taken uh, my background black clay and this is actually three layers through uh, a thick setting. And what I'm going to do is take the second piece and I'm going to position it on this clay. So I'm creating the space between the very tip and the second piece. That makes sense. Now it's blunt here, but I'm going to actually cut it, make an angled cut like this. like so. Then this piece, and remember, put the base, the gold part. The gold part will actually go on my work surface. I want to make sure I have good contact there. Push it down. Now with just the palm of my hands, I'm sort of 
I'm just sort of coaxing it down like so. Okay. Let's just cut this off. And I'll show you what it looks like from the side. Like so. Now, this first piece is going to find its way probably here. All right. And then the stem will come off in this direction. Okay, so let's build the second piece. Going to take this once again. And this time it's going to be an even steeper cut. And you see where this cut, this line is? I'm going to try to put that line, here, I'll show you, this line. Actually, I made a little mistake there. That's too steep, I think. I'm going to take and position this on that line. Okay. Let me cut some of this excess away right now, just to get rid of it, because it's really in my way. And now the next part will be like this. So this, that um, that cut created the space between the individual parts of the frond, if that makes sense. Now, if you find, because this seems a little bit long, the distance from one to the next might be a little bit too long. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just going to shorten it by cutting some away, like so. Now these two pieces will actually be a bit closer together than before. All right, so let's apply the second one. That's the second. Now I will do the same thing. I will take and I will cut an angled piece 
I'll put it here and then I will continue to press the remaining two fronds against, uh, against the center. And I'm pushing it down here because I want to maintain this angle, this angle. If it gets too upright, then uh, it, it gets the whole process gets a little more difficult. So that's why I'm pushing this over a bit. Okay, so I will continue and I'll be back. Well, it's pretty much time to pack this so that I can reduce it. And um, this is a little bit too short uh, right now because remember, I want to I want to uh, mirror image. So this will end up being cut in half and then uh, reassembled later. So I want to be able to reduce it. And the way I tend to reduce mostly is by rolling large cylinders of the background color and then cutting wedges like so. So I've got a wedge and um, let's just fill this space right here. Now at this point in time, I'm not too worried or I'm not even really much thinking about curving these in any particular way that I can do later. I just want to get to the point where I have a whole cane. So I'm trying to reshape this so that it will fit in there. That looks pretty good, but I've got a blunt, you see this sheet? So I'm just going to cut right there. Hopefully this cut will meet that cut. Okay, so I'm gonna pull it back a bit. and insert that piece. And now close it up. Put some of the excess away. Okay. No, it's not perfect. I'll do my best. And when you do this, just do your best to get the wedge all the way down in to the space. Okay, that's pretty good. All right, let's take another wedge. Now, this one is uh, quite a bit steeper. So I'm just going to take and cut this one in half to begin with. And that's a better fit. So I'm going to pull it back a little bit and insert the point into the space. Push it down in. So I filled up that space. Now, of course, I have to fill this in. And I've got to fill this space up here. Just going to reshape this.
Okay, so I got the spaces. Now I just have to fill in this area. And then I'll be able to start reducing it. Okay, so I'm going to continue. Filling the spaces. And I'll be back back again. Now it's time to start doing some trimming. Now I may have to build certain parts up, but I really want to see how this is going like that. Uh, I really want to cut that away. What I want to do is create a shape that I can reduce. And it's easier if I reduce triangles or squares or circles. Not something that's really kind of odd shaped like that. So I will try to carefully cut away. And of course, not cutting into the cane if I can. I hadn't really intended to make a cane quite this large. You know, I, I won't be using the whole thing in the tropical cane. So what's left over may turn into beads or end up being used in another cane entirely. But this ended up being quite large. That's a lot of black clay. But of course I made that myself, so I'm not worried about running out. If you're beginning at, uh, at caning, then you're probably going to want to use something like a, a packaged color as a background so that you don't have to keep trying to mix the very same color. Or if you use my clay, get the black out and start by making your canes with a black background because you can always make that black clay so you don't have to really worry about running out. All right, so um, I've got a good start on it. I will cut some of this away at the base. Then I might I might have to build up the corners, but I'll be I will be back. Okay, I'll be back. Now I have to fill in this corner, so I will go into this all these little scraps that I cut, and I'm just going to take one of them. Just wrap it around the corner like that. Like so. Just fill it in. And now with my blade, cut the excess away to actually make the corner. Now, I do this overpacking a lot. It, it's much easier to do something like that than it is to try to actually construct the perfect corner. You can more easily cut away the perfect corner. So there's a corner, and I will build up the corner at the top. Once again, going through my various scrap pieces that I cut away. Pick one, 
wrap it around. Now, when you're doing this, I do recommend you use a rigid blade, not one that's very thin and, uh, and flexible. It's much easier to cut straight down in the clay if you're using a blade that will hold its own against the clay. You've probably noticed if you use very, very thin blades, that the blade is pulled through the clay. Sometimes it just torques and it just, the clay grabs it and it pulls, making it very difficult to cut straight down. Okay, that looks pretty good. I think I can cut a little more here. I have to be careful because I'm getting very close to the tip here. Okay. Okay, now it's time to reduce. Now, the best way I have found to start the reduction, I just need, this is still bothering me just a bit. Let me see if I can just shave off some here. Okay, good. Now, if you look, you can see that parts of the um, the cane that I've made are kind of pulled back in, and then parts are up. Now, the black clay that you see that is raised above the green leaves, well, it's softer. It's just softer. And so it moves and it responds when I apply pressure to the outside. So it's going to move. Now, these parts of the palm frond, well, they're a little bit different. They're not moving in the same way. So I see one thing here I want to do right now. And that is... I want to cut a little bit of this black away, just a touch. Because remember what I said about it looks like the palm is floating in the black? Well, that's what happened here. And it's fine on the end, but I don't want that to be an issue through the whole cane. Okay, so I exposed more of the gold inside. All right, so here we go. So I usually begin by taking my acrylic rod and flattening. So basically I'm pushing that black clay down again. so that it's more level and even with the green. Turn it over, do the same thing. Thing is, if I leave it and continue and try not to get it to move with the black clay, then I will have a lot of waste. Thank you. 
I mean, uh, I anticipate a certain amount of waste. You cannot do anything about it, but I think that that's just too much waste. So, So I twist my hand and, you know, twisting and torquing clay gets it moving too. And when you have some length in a cane, you can twist it end to end like this, but I have no length. This is very short. Now, when we get to putting this back in, we have another whole set of problems, don't we? because the outline will be different. I wanted to avoid that, only I hadn't really thought about it, so we will solve that problem when we get there. So at this point, I'm pushing against the base primarily and trying to bring the cane up this way, not by pulling it up, but actually by pushing at the base to try to get it to rise. not too bad. It's not hanging back too much, but still, see, still here. Although it would have been worse had I not started with this. So you return to this every now and then. Do the best you can. and then push in at the bottom. And every now and then, inspect the corners and pull them out. All right, so I will continue with that. If I keep the video going, we'll be together for, oh, 
a half an hour maybe, maybe even more, doing just this very same thing. But you can see how the cane is starting to get reduced. Okay, I'll be back. Now, I've worked it up so that it's, it is longer or taller, and it hasn't uh, really pulled back too much on the ends. So it feels good and soft. You can flex. So at this point is when I start pulling, flexing and pulling from the ends. Now also, this is helpful. It's a triangle, so it's also easy. Oh, put it on one side. And with your palms, press in. Next side, press in. And if this on this side, if it's getting too tall, you can also press down as you're pressing on the sides. All right. Now, every now and then, I will roll this flat. So I think that you bring it back down to the same level as much as possible. You see this is all the way in. Do your best. And I think that uh, the packing clay will help pull the, uh, the green clay up with it. But there will still be quite a bit of waste, I think. Just really because it's an odd shape for me to be reducing at this point. And also because, to tell you the truth, I'm not the best reducer. I, I'm just really not... I've talked about this before. It's because I don't have a lot of upper body strength that would really help in a case like this also. Okay. More twisting. Twist, 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 twist. Twist. I think I want to bring this out to about five inches. And then I will cut it in half, and we will put the halves together. Okay, back again. Here are the two halves. Cut it in half, and now these two halves will be put together. Now, this is the waist. I actually cut too much off of this one, but you can see this is the waist that I cut off the ends. All right, this is the piece that goes in the center. So let's decide where this is gonna go. How about right there? Okay, right there. Now the stem is just going to be gold. So let me cut this, thin it just a bit. Is that too thick? That looks rather thick. So let me take this. Actually, I'm gonna roll it through the pasta machine. 
Tuck it right there. And you can see I want that gold to touch the gold around the uh, palm leaf. All right, that's good. Now, let's put this other one down. Now, I'm going to offset it a bit, like so, so you can see that the opposite. It's not really mirror imaging, right? The stems are connecting the, I mean, excuse me, <laughs> the palm leaves are, um, are connecting to the stem, sort of offset. Okay, that's good. Now, this side, I have to push down a bit. Like so. Okay, that looks good. Very good. I think this is going to be fine. All right, so I will continue to pack, and I want this to curve a bit, the tip. So, oops, oopsie. So I'm going to bring the clay from the top here up like that, and then try to push the tip. around and over. Like so. Okay. So before I do the packing, let's do some uh, alteration of one side of the palm frond so that it looks a little different. Even though they came from the same place, there's quite a bit we can do to alter. I'm just marking where I'm going to cut like so. like that, cut straight down, and let's remove that much, okay, you ready, just going to take my blade and cut straight down. And I'm following these lines that I made on the side. Remove. Now I'm going.
going to take and push it closed. So now you can see on this side, on the right side of the palm, this particular piece is now curving up more than on the other side. All right, so let's make an adjustment to this side. And I'm gonna cut straight down here. Once again, I'm going to mark this side like that and connect the two marks. And now I am going to cut straight down along that line. And when I open it up, the tip of this one is going to curve down. This one's up, this one's down. Now I think I'm gonna make this go down even further by cutting a little deeper and opening up like so. Now I will fill this gap. And I did cut a bit in. So let me see if I can recut around it. Put them back together and I think that'll be fine. Might not be perfect, but I still think it's going to be fine. Okay, so you can make adjustments and change uh, quite a bit about the details in the palm frond by cutting away, removing, pushing pieces where you want them. So let me continue and, uh, and then we'll pack it. Okay, so I packed the cane and I've been kind of pushing it around. Um, now, the total cane I'm going to make is about this size. So I'm going to reduce this so it is two-thirds this size. Because I think maybe if this is two-thirds, then I'll fill the other areas with other canes. I can always make them smaller. But while this is good and noodly, noodly, nice and soft, uh, I am going to reduce it rather than waiting until later. All right, so let me reduce it and I will be back. Just remember, what we did before, you're gonna take it and twist and start to agitate that clay in the middle and get it to move, so I will be back. All right, uh, I reduced this down and I cut a piece off about four inches. And this is what I'm going to reserve for the larger cane I'm going to build later. This was the original close to, well, this was actually after it was reduced. So it was even bigger than this before. All right, so this will go into another cane and this is going to be reduced and I'm gonna make some beads. So I will be back. 
Welcome back. It's day two of a uh, tropical leaf cane. Tropical leaves cane. Well, anyway, it's day two. Made this and um, reduced it. And it's nice and square. So I decided I will, would reduce it further and make some beads. You know, I like these beads. We talked about the fact that there's not going to be much contrast in this area because it's dark and the background is dark. So I think that these are rather nice because the tips of the palm frond really stand out. Okay. But then I looked at my drawing and I realized that the palm frond in the drawing had a lot more curvature. It had more motion. This is pretty static. It's fine and it works on the beads. But uh, in this cane that I'm attempting to make, this is much more static than my drawing. The drawing has a palm that's curving. It, it just, it, it, there's a lot more uh, movement. So I took the piece and I reshaped it. So you can see that even though I made it and it's rather static, I can by pushing and pulling making it a bit thinner. Maybe pull the base out a bit. Pull the tip out. Push it over a bit so that the tip curls to the right, I mean to the left. I do know my left from right. That reshaping like this can alter the feel of the cane and impart some movement and a little more life And I could continue. I stopped at about this point, maybe. I can make this one a little thinner, too. But you can see that even though you make a cane um, a certain way, it was very squared off and very kind of even, that it's possible in many instances to change the character of the cane by changing its overall shape. It is no longer. Okay, peeps, so you've seen the end of it. Well, actually, you didn't see it originally. This was gonna be part of another bigger cane, and I did actually do that, but it's not something I think I will bother showing you because it could have been better. It could have been better, what can I say? Anyway, so now you know how to make this I love this. I love this leaf. And you've also seen in some other class the way it can be used. And I know you guys, you'll know what to do with these. Now, you might try packing instead of black, translucent. Then you can slice thin, thin, thinly and overlay them and they would be quite beautiful. Maybe someday I'll do that. Anyway, that's it for today. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you make lots of palm fronds, and I hope you have a great day. I am now signing out. Bye.